parts that we need to, to look at here, some of the default columns that we have built in are predecessors and resource names. Let's go look at our model. Uh, we can see that in here they've done, they've linked things up using predecessors. Predecessors are linked based on the row numbers that you see over on the left hand column. So if I put in a predecessor of one on the determined governance membership structure here, that that what that implies is that over here on the Gantt chart you'll see that this first task, the number one here, has to be complete before the next one can start. This is what's called a finish to start relationship, and that's default behavior. Um, if you want to do anything besides that, uh, finish to start, you have to include like uh, you have to include the code such as FF or FS or SF. At the, at the end of that predecessor relationship. So for example, if I wanted this to become a finish to finish relationship, um, I can type in the field here one, we'll go SS, start to start. Start to start means I can both start at the same time. Watch what happens as I click my enter key, you'll see this task move over to show that it's a start to start relationship. Now the arrow moved, basically says these two can start at the same time. I'm scheduled to start these on this particular day, which is July, I think, 2nd or 3rd, probably July 3rd there. But it's saying that these tasks now can start at the same time. See, I don't have to wait for this one to, to start before this one can start. I've actually got a start-to-start -start relationship on those. It's probably be a little more clear if I did something like on this task, uh, determine IT reporting structure. If I say 4SS here, you'll see that one move. There, there went the arrow again. Um, so just to just to see how how those uh, predecessor relationships work, I'll I'll go back and leave that as a one. So let's uh, build these in. Each of these four tasks are have a predecessor of one, which is the launch initiative task up here. That one has to be done before we can start the others. Then down here we have the vision of enterprise governance established. You see that tasks four, five, six, and seven have to be complete before we can consider ourselves done there. And that one's a milestone event as well. Uh, and then we've got eight and nine. These are basically just kind of lining things up linearly, where this one feeds into this one, this one feeds into this one. You can see that on the Gantt chart view over there. So let's go set up our uh, our predecessors. Over here, uh, we're going to set up a predecessor of one here, one here, one here, one here, and then uh, four, five, six, and seven here, and. Uh, 8 here, 9 here, and 10 here. So now you'll see the Gantt chart view has updated to show how those tasks now flow one right into the other in a, in a waterfall kind of model. Okay. That takes care of predecessors. Next thing we need to deal with is resources. Let's add in some resources. Resources are basically, they can be people, they can be equipment, they can be materials. In this case, we're just going to deal with departments. So I'm going to go over to the resource view and add in, I'm going to go to my uh, resource sheet and we're going to add in a couple of resources. Uh, we're going to add in the uh, business, business decision maker, this is like the big boss, the CEO, whatever you want to call him, we'll, go, we'll call him the business decision maker. We'll have an investment sponsor. This is where I'm creating the list of resources in uh, Microsoft Project. So PMO, Director, in this case, some of these are people. Um, sometimes you can do these as departments. I uh, see most of these are individual people. This last one, IT Governance Team, we can list that out. That can be a separate department. It all depends on how you want to track this. but. Um, project is flexible enough to let you go either way. So now that we've got those created, now we can go start assigning these people to tasks and we'll see how that changes our, our model here. Uh, one other column I'm going to throw in here just so you can see the difference is I'm going to include the, the work column. So here's work and I want you to see the difference between days. Uh, we've got Work being tracked in hours, this is be, this will be tracked in man hours, and duration is tracked in terms of days. 
And I'm going to go over to my resource column now and start assigning people to these tasks. Go check my model, see what it looks like. Who do I need to assign to what? I've got the business decision maker, the CIO, and the investment sponsor assigned to the first, to this first task, and I've got the PMO director on it as well. You see that each of those tasks uh, has a different set of people involved. The decision maker and the CIO on the second one, the uh, same there, uh, same there except we add the PMO director. This is allowing me to assign particular people or departments to each task. So let's go, let's go back and we're going to recreate those here. We've got, um, I go to my resource name view, I click the drop down list, I can start assigning people to these tasks. Okay, so I'm going to go to the decision maker and the CIO here, the decision maker and the CIO there, the the same one here. Added the PMO director, I think. And you'll notice that these hours are, are automatically calculating. The more people I put on a task, even though the duration stays the same, the hours increase. Now watch what happens on this next one. I'll, I'll add in, uh, we'll do those three. And when I hit enter, <coughs> I can go over and adjust the, that total work time. But it's it's assuming as I make assignments here, project just assumes that you're going to assign each of these people full time to each of these tasks. Uh, let's see. We'll, we'll go with those. We'll take off the PMO director there. We'll add the investment sponsor back on here. We'll go the whole team. And uh, there we now we've got assignments on each of these. If we go check our, our model over here, we can quickly check our numbers and make sure we got this right. But uh, let's add in the work column on this one as well, just to check, see who we've got assigned to what. So this one was just the PMO director. This one was the oh, decision maker CIO. Okay, so I guess make some adjustments there between the two. Anyway, you see that the process of assigning resource names automatically calculates their time. You can make adjustments to those resources in the resource sheet. Uh-oh, you see these warnings. These, these tell you that I've got some of these people working overtime. Um, some tools inside of, of Project to help you out with that would be the resource usage sheet. Uh, this will show me, uh-oh, I've got the business decision maker scheduled to work 32 hours in one single day on Monday, May the 16th. He's working 32 hours because he's got four different tasks that he's working full time on. Some things we can do in, in project to work with that now, but uh, just so you see an introduction of how project is tracking some of this. Uh, let's see, let's come back over to, the, to my Gantt chart view and uh, get you familiar with that interface. Let's, uh, as, as you tweak around with the people and the times that are available in here, some of the places that you can go to do that are, you know, we, we showed how you can assign different people and it automatically calculates. Uh, if I go to the uh, to the work column here and just adjust the time, let's go see who that affects. If I drop that down to eight hours, now it gives me this funny little drop down box and says, you decreased the task duration so the work is done over a shorter period of time, you, or it can say decrease the hours, resources, work per day so the task duration stays the same. Show me more details. So this is telling you, it's giving you a warning of it's not really sure how to deal with this and it wants you to help make the decision. It does. It has some default behavior. Uh, it says uh, since you de decrease the task duration, you'll notice that when I drop this down to eight hours, it dropped the task duration down to a half a day now. Uh, we could just say, no, I'm just going to decrease the hours that resources work per day so the task duration stays the same. It's still a one day task, but if I go in and look at my resource usage sheet now, where I was seeing the, uh, the one fellow that was working and uh, had way too much work on a particular day. Uh, well, let's go back to my resource sheet first. I gotta make sure that I'm doing this the same way. Resource sheet, and then if I go back into my, uh, there we go. Resource usage, okay. Now we see my business decision maker 
that task that I changed dropped him down to four hours on that on that task. It split it up between him and the uh, the CIO. Those were the two resources that were assigned to that, and it just took them down uh, together. We can go in and adjust some of this here. Let's say if we wanted this guy only working on it for one hour, and he can work on it for seven. Now let's go back and check our Gantt chart view. And it shows that that task still being worked on for eight hours, but I was able to adjust who was working on what by going into my resource usage sheet, identifying that task in the day, and making the change. So project's very helpful. It, it gives you, provides you multiple, multiple views in working with this. I want you to play with some of the options in here. See if you can figure out uh, the effects of changing certain elements piece by piece and, and what that does to the overall task. So uh, when you're done, I would ask you to include a note and describe what you found. So let me show you how to add a note. If I double click on this task, I've got a notes tab and you can include, I said, I played around with uh, task times for individuals in the uh, resource usage sheet found I could control uh, the, um, the amount of hours worked on a task for two people. Okay, that was my note. Uh, what I want you to do is go play around with this. Experiment, try something new, um, and then tell me what you found. And do that on the last few steps here, and we'll call this good. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll talk to you and find out what you learned.